now for the five-day forecast for Costa Rica. We're going to have rain today, rain tomorrow, and rain that. Wait, hang on, one second. Ladies and gentlemen, I'm getting some knife news reports here. Yes, there's a killer asteroid heads towards Earth. Quick, grab your kids, kiss your dog. Now it's time. The asteroid's going to head within 283,000 kilometers. To wait, 283. Hang on one second. Are you sure about that? 283,000 kilometers? That sounds like a far away. That's like seven times around the world. Yeah, I'm pretty sure. It, I mean, this is the news. We need to have accurate information, and that doesn't sound like an emergency. I mean, is that close? So, okay, this might be a little goofy, but this is actually a case in the news, really. So there was a asteroid that came in really close, and we're going to determine later on how close that was by using some scientific notation. And, but before we get into that, we need to focus in on what scientific notation is, so we're going to take some notes. So the two things we're going to focus on for today is going to be scientific notation itself, and the second one is significant digits. So we're going to talk a little bit more about those two. Let's start off with scientific notation. So the notes for scientific notation. Scientific notation means numbers that can be expressed in base 10. In other words, it's m times 10 to the nth is the way we would write that down. The m stands for a number that is equal to or greater than 1 and less than 10 and n is going to be any integer. So you have some number times 10 to an integer. So we, let's look at 6.022 times 10 to the 23rd. This is Avogadro's number. It should look familiar for those of you in chemistry. You could also see it with an e written in it, so e to the 23rd, and that is what you'll have in your calculator. So the ti uses e, and that means engineering notation, which is the same as scientific notation. It's just how your calculator uses it. All right, so let's go ahead and look at why we concentrate on scientific notation. There are two main reasons. The big one is that it's easier to represent really big numbers that we use a lot in science and small numbers that we use a lot in science. The second thing is that it is also easier to compare sizes of numbers together. So you get to the relative value of sizes because it's in the same format. So now let's look at significant digits. Significant digits are the digits that help us determine the precision or accuracy of a number. So the more digits we have, more significant digits we have, the more accurate the number. So let's look at a couple examples. So I have 2013.5, and that's going to have, let's see, one, two, three, four, five significant digits. Now let's look at a decimal. So the five and three are the significant digits just those two. The zero is going to be our placeholder that's in front of the decimal. Now let's look at another decimal with a zero in between the point and the, and the first significant digit there. So those two zeros are going to be our placeholders. Any zero in between the decimal point and another number, those are just placeholders. So those just determine how far back it is. But if we add two zeros in the end, like I just did here with the five three, that does change the numbers. So we have now four significant digits. Now you might be thinking, why four significant digits when we have the 0.53 is two? And, and well, when we compare those two, let's look at how the accuracy has changed. So if you have 0.526 and 0.534, those are both rounded to 0.53. Now looking at the number on the far right, 0 0.05300, those two zeros changes the accuracy to six places behind the decimal point. So now you have a more accurate number. You can see how far back those are and just ignore those extra decimal points that I threw in there. In any case, another example that you might be more familiar with is GPAs. Now last week, this is an old style for our GPAs, is only one significant digit that you can see here in the ranges that are associated with the GPA points. Now our new GPA system has three significant digits and those three significant digits changes the range or the accuracy of the points. So now if you get a 91, you get a 3.67 instead of a 3.00. So I think you'll appreciate the better accuracy that we now have for our grading. So let's look at specific examples. Example number one, and we're going to be using scientific notation. So let's convert 0 0.0000460 into a scientific notation. Now looking at the last three digits, those are my significant digits. 
and 4.60 times 10 to the, to find out this number, we need to count from the decimal point, and it's gonna be moving five spaces, so that means we are going to have a negative number since it's moving to the right. So if we have a right, it's gonna be a negative number, and that means it's a negative five that we won't want to put in there. So it's 4.60 times 10 to the negative fifth. That is scientific notation for the number above. Now we're going to start example number two. We're going to use the number 56,789 times 10 to the negative 2. So we need to convert this back into between 1 and 10. So we're going to move the decimal point. And our first number there is going to be 5.6789 times 10 to the fourth since we moved it over. And then we still have the 10 to the negative 2, so I want to make sure I subtract those exponents together. So I'm going to end up with 5.6789 times 10 to the second. And since I moved everything over to the left this time, that means my exponent is positive. So now I'll give you some time to write all those down. Make sure you got it. If you have any questions about this, just go ahead and let me know. Or pause and rewind. Beauty of video. So now we're going to work on example number three. So remember that asteroid problem that we had in the beginning? Well, let's go ahead and use that as an example. So according to that news report, it was 283,000 kilometers away. Let's look at the significant digits. It's 283. And the other zeros are placeholders. So now we can set up our scientific notation. Just need the exponent, and that's 5. So 2.83 times 10 to the fifth is a way of representing that distance in scientific notation. So when we're talking about space and we have these asteroids that travel millions and millions of miles, we have these really big numbers that we have to deal with. And when they come to Earth, we also have to deal with really small numbers too because we want to see those microscopic things. So in science, we use both big numbers and small numbers. And that's why we have scientific notation to help us compare those relative sizes. So in example number four, we are going to look at different numbers that are written in scientific notation and see how to compare them. So I have, I'm going to write down three different pairs of numbers. And if you would just copy these three pairs together written down and then we'll go through them. So give you some time to write these numbers down. Make sure that you're copying them correctly. 5.2 times 10 to the, let's use three. And, uh, okay, and then the last number is gonna be 4.1, three times 10 to the, let's use four. Okay, so now when looking at A, don't be confused with the numbers, leading numbers in front, because we really want to be concentrating instead on the exponents. So not those leading numbers, but the exponents. And when you compare the exponents, four is greater, so four, the value is gonna be greater. Looking at B, looking at the exponents again, know that a negative two is gonna be larger than negative five, especially on the number scale when you look left to right. And for C, we need to convert both sides to be in the proper scientific notation form. And you'll see that the exponents are the same, so we just compare those front values. And 7.52 is bigger than 4.13. So these are the relative sizes uh, when we compare those different numbers. OK, so let's look at another form of significant digits. Now, the speed of light. Speed of light is traditionally this long number, meters per second. Now, when we write it, you could write them with, I'm going to use three significant digits, and there's going to be eight. So this is now scientific notation with three significant digits. So that means that the accuracy of my calculations will be up to that three significant digit number. Now, to know what I'm talking about, let's go and do an example number five. It's going to be a word problem. I know these are your favorite. So now, if the Earth is... 1.5 times 10 to the 11th meters away from the sun. How long does it take for a light beam to reach the Earth? All right, so I'm going to give you a second to write all this down. And now we're going to continue on. So the things that we we're given from the problem is... 1.5 times 10 to 11 meters, that's our distance. 3.00 times 10 to the eighth is the speed that we calculated before. And we're trying to find 
time. So before we use the equation speed equals distance over time, let's convert that to t equals distance over speed. So let's write that out. 1.5 times 10 to the 11th over 3.00 times 10 to the 8th. Now I'm going to divide, it's going to be about 0 0.500 times, now look at these exponents, we need to subtract them since we're dividing, so we're going to get times 10 to the third. Now I want to convert this to scientific notation, and it has to be a number between 1 and 10. So I need a 5.00 times 10 to the second, and the reason why is because we had to move the decimal place over one to the right, so we had to change that number. Now looking at the accuracy, I used two significant digits on top and three on the bottom, which means I could only use two of my answer, because I can only be as accurate as the numbers I'm using. So I need to change my scientific notation, my answer to 5.0 times 10 to the second, which is 500 seconds, and if I want to convert that to minutes, just for fun, divided by 60, and we get 8 minutes and 20 seconds. So that is the amount of time it takes for sunlight to get to the Earth. So that means if the sun explodes, we won't know about it until, you know, some 8 minutes, 20 seconds later. Well, that's how it goes. So now thinking back to the very beginning and that crazy guy who was telling me about, about this asteroid thing, well, you know, apparently the United Nations and a lot of other people are trying to take this really seriously. So let's look back and try to see if we can calculate how far that really was and if it really was a significant number. So how close was that asteroid? So what we're going to do is we're going to have to make some assumptions, but we're going to assume that the asteroid is going to be on some sort of circular path, which they're all elliptical. And when we are looking at the asteroid, we want to see what the percent difference is of that change in path uh, in order to figure out how close it is and see how likely it is. So here's our asteroid coming right next to the Earth. And we know that distance that it came in between the Earth is going to be uh, 2.83 times 10 to the fifth kilometers. And the average orbit, again, the average orbit because it's an elliptical orbit typically but we're going to use uh, the value here of let's see about 4.374 times 10 to 8 kilometers so we want to see how much change that would have to have in order for the asteroid to hit the Earth. So how much change in the orbit of the asteroid would need to take place. Now if it's a really really small number then we might be in trouble. If it's a big number, then the likelihood of that is probably less. So we're just going to look at that percent change, and again, we're just going to be comparing uh, two different numbers here. So we want to see what that distance changes over the total radius. So we're going to compare two numbers. Again, we are using a ratio or that rational expression, and we're going to be dividing those two numbers together. So we should know how to do this. We're going to take those first constants and divide them together. You get 0 0.6470, and by taking the exponents, we're going to subtract them, we're going to get negative 3. And this is not yet in proper scientific notation, so I'm going to have to change that and also look at the significant digits that I could use. So let's see, I have 3 and I have 4 in the bottom, so I could only use 3. So I'm going to have 6.47 times 10 to the fourth. I'm going to be moving it over 1 because I had to move the decimal over to the right. And so I'm not going to change it into percent just so it's easier to understand. So I'm multiply it by 100, and I'm going to get 0.06%. So it's a really tiny percent, 0.0647, using all those significant digits. So 0.06% is really a relatively small percentage of change in orbit. So it seems that it's a fairly significant number. So even though, you know, 2.83 times 10 to the fifth kilometers seems like a lot of ways, it's, it's really small compared to that overall orbit. Now when you think about the distance of the moon and knowing that asteroid passed closer than the moon, and knowing that the moon itself affects our tidal waves and our oceans, that uh, having an asteroid come in between those two distances is really quite close. Now, lucky for us, that asteroid was only about the size of a truck, so it wouldn't cause, you know, worldwide calamity, but just some regional damage. But rest assured, things are not too crazy. Now, when we look at the details of this, 
uh, NASA has been looking into it and they have much more accurate equipment. And you can see there they have 9.998%, that's five significant digits, that the asteroid will miss the Earth, so we should be okay. And have time to do more math problems. Yay! Next day and wait, so ladies and gentlemen, hold on. I'm getting late breaking news. Yes, I, I seem to be. Don't know what I'm saying. Now it's time to work. It's only time to quit it. Two of them. People, grab your kids. Kiss your dog because now it's time to go because it, it's, it's coming up with the 2,800. That's not even the right number. That doesn't seem like such an emergency. Really? Is that close at all? I mean, what's this? An angry cookie? A killer asteroid is headed towards Earth. It's, yes, the, the, 